I'm going to try and contain my excitement because it's actually going to be clear tonight. It's been a long time coming. Um, so I'm going to try and make the most of it. Uh, so what am I going to be imaging? Well, it's uh, an object called CG4 or Cometary Globule 4. Uh, it's in the constellation of Puppis down here in the Southern Hemisphere and uh, it's about 1300 light years away and it's I think the, called a cometary globule because it resembled a comet when it was, you know, seen first. It's got a sort of a bulbous head and a tail coming off, but it largely seems to be composed of um, dust, dark dust. Uh, but there is some hydrogen around, um, where there's, so there's a bit of glowing goes on around the edges and the, sort of in the, what to me looks like the sort of mouth of a giant space slug. Um, so I will capture some HA as well, but it'll mostly be LRGB. Now, it, this thing looks like it's sort of reaching out and to swallow a galaxy, uh, a sort of edge-on spiral galaxy, but that galaxy is actually about 100 million light years away, so um, just a coincidence the way um, they are both positioned. I'm going to be capturing it with the Skywatcher Esprit 120, and it's going to have the ASI 2600 mm Pro, and I think in there I've got the Optolong, um no, I've got the Beta LRGB filters and the Optolong 3 nanometer HA filter. So, um, yeah, it's, as I said, it's sort of a creepy looking object to me. It sort of reminds me of the um, sort of big space slug that was um, that the Millennium Falcon uh, escaped from when it was in the asteroid. <laughs> Um, although it does look like a few other things. Um, I think somebody's mentioned it as looking a bit like the Doomsday Machine episode in Star Trek um, or even uh, some similar object on, on Dune. So um, yeah, there's a few of these scary objects in movies and this is certainly one in space. So I'm just going to wait till it gets dark and uh, start imaging. Okay, so look, I can't really show you all the steps that I went through in the processing of this image because I didn't, unfortunately, keep all the steps. Um, and it's probably just as well because um, it would have taken far too long to show you everything. But I've got some basic um, versions of steps that I've done through the processing that give you a bit of an idea how I went about um, producing this image. I don't know if this is the best way of doing it. So when you, I'm, I'm used to combining HA with LRGB images when it comes to galaxies because then you're dealing with little small areas of nebulosity in a galaxy and adding those to your red channel um, to, to bring out those nice HA regions in the galaxy. But in this situation, I wanted to bring out more the HA that was in the background, which is a bit, but much more diffuse look. So I, I did this similar process, um, but as I said, don't know if it's the best way of going about it. If people have got some uh, other ideas, please leave them in the uh, comments below. That would be greatly appreciated. Now, I'll show you um, a single sub. This is a single luminance, uh, five minutes. And um, as you can see, pretty disappointing. Uh, you can kind of see the galaxy, this big galaxy over here, and you can see the edge on one that... Um, uh, the cometary globule is sort of reaching out to um, grab. The, the cometary globule is here, the head of it, but again, as I've mentioned before, it kind of looks more like an absence of stars than anything else. No, none of that great rewarding sort of nebula structure that you see in, a, in an HA normally. But once you stack enough of those, you do um, start to get some nice structure. And you can see now the actual... Here's the sort of a lot of the dusty region and the sort of um, what I think of as a space slug uh, extending out to try and um, eat this this galaxy. Um, same with the red stack. You know, you can see it's not too bad. Blue stack a little bit darker, not so well defined. Um, there may have been less subs in that blue. I can't remember now. And this is the green. Now, when I did an a combination of RGB. I ended up with um, something that looks like this. Now this has 
got a, a bit more processing involved. As I said, I've lost some of the steps in there, but it hasn't necessarily got a lot of the HA that I wanted to bring out. You can see some sort of slightly orangey or rusty look here, but this is showing up nicely, the, the dust of the dark part of the nebula, but I really did want to bring out the HA that was surrounding this area and also in the background. So um, what I ended up doing was this was a, this was my HA here, and you can kind of see it looks like it is sort of making a bit of a glow around the outside of the cometary globule. There is some HA in here as well, and then there's HA around the back here. Now, I tried a few things. One, I just tried replacing the red channel with the HA and did an HA-GB um, combination, if you like. I also did an extract HA, which um, I did the usual sort of extraction here and then combine it with the red channel. Interestingly enough, this was the combination that I got, um, but it looked very similar to just a straight, <laughs> the straight HA. So um, I could have probably just done HAGB, but I, I did this HA and red combination here and then combined that with the green and the blue. And I ended up with this, which is a bit overpowering with the, the hydrogen. It certainly brought, brought out the, um, the nice glow of the hydrogen around the outside, but it's it sort of made a lot of this too much um, hydrogen, I think. It, I've lost that sort of nice dusty look. It's got nice hydrogen in the background here, a uh, nice HA. So I wanted to keep that, but I just wanted to sort of somehow get a combination of this and uh, this. And so the best way I thought I found to do this was to take it into Photoshop. So I'll just leave this one up here for the moment and that like that. Now, if we go into Photoshop, I'm going to take these away. This is um, just that HA RGB. So it's um, this one put in. And then I duplicated the layer and then I pasted in as a, a, on top this one here. But I wanted to use masks to try and um, retain all the nice HA around here. So what I did was, if you have a look in this, you can see that there is a mask here. And if I just make this now visible, you can see how it has um, taken out um, some of that HA in here and left more of the nice dust that I wanted, but has maintained the background hydrogen. So we've still got the glow around the outside here, and we've got the background. And then a matter of doing curves, etc., to do a bit more processing um, through here. And again, unfortunately, I don't have all the steps that I did. But if we go back to Pix and Sight, um, I think I got to this point and then did a bit more processing. And then I added in the RGB stars. Um, and I ended up with um, this final image here, which I was pretty happy with. Um, and uh, again, as I said, a bit more tweaking with curves, a bit more of making the background a bit darker. Um, kept the HA. You can see the HA glow around here. Again, I didn't want it to overpower the dark, dusty areas. Otherwise, this could have all turned out to be very red. But um, yeah, that's how I went about um, doing this. It was a sort of, a, as I said, combining an HA RGB image version with an RGB image version with masks, etc. So again, if you've got any comments on a better way to do this, please let me know. That would be fantastic. Um, otherwise, look, thank you very much for um, sticking with me through this video. Um, and, you know, hopefully you found it, it interesting. If so, um, give us a like, uh, leave a comment, and I, I reply to all comments. And, um, yeah, maybe consider subscribing if you're new to the channel uh, and have a check out some of the other videos that I've done. And uh, anyway, look, I'll leave you with the final image. I hope everybody is getting um, lots and lots of clear skies. We're starting to get a few more now, which is nice. And uh, I'll leave you with my uh, image of the uh, what I consider to be the sp scary space slug um, CG4 or Cometary Globule 4.
forget any lines in these things. Shut up, Meg. 